It's the only piece of the puzzle we have of what might have happened after he left the plane. So it tells its own story. If Carr and his team determine how the money got there and when, it could help answer the most important question. Did Cooper survive? Another segment of D.B. Cooper Through the Lens of Logic. I'm going to cover a theorem and two axioms today, and this segment is called On the Money. The Cracking the Safe Theorem states that the more complicated and complex the mystery, the harder it is to solve it, and which, which basically means the more probable that a viable solution is the actual truth. And that's really what we're looking for in this mystery is what's the truth, and it's very tough to know because it was 40 years ago. The mystery is so old uh, and much has been lost, forgotten, you name it. So really, our only solution is to, to really get down and detailed and figure out all the little pinpoints that we need to be able to hit with a hypothetical resolution so that we know that it's most likely probable. And that's what the Cracking the Safe theorem is all about. So Dr. Palmer's opinion was that the money had been there for no more than a year, and I've said it before that logic concurs with this. And let's look at when. This video is focused on when this money most likely arrived where it was found. So let's talk about 365 days being a year. So over here would be day zero. This would be February 10th, 1979. This day here at the very other end would be February 10th, 1980, the day it was found. And you have 365 days and we're expecting that money to arrive, basically, if we were to do this, uh, say, a hundred times, we would expect it to be on a on a probability curve or normal distribution like we've shown here. So let's take a look at how that works. Uh, just so you know, a median is the middle, and it means that you have the same amount of days on the on this uh, uh, before, same amount of days after. Okay, one standard deviation is 68% of uh, your observed occurrences are going to be within one standard deviation. That's really what we're, we're going to focus on today. Uh, to give you an idea, if you play poker, uh, an ace-king suited, also known as big slick, uh, is a favorite 67% of the time against any, two, uh, any random hand that you pull out of the deck. People will go all in with ace-king suited uh, in, in many instances especially in a tournament situation. So the median in this case is actually midnight, August 12th, 1979. Uh, because of the number of days, you can either pick the 11th or the 12th or just, you know, split down the middle. Uh, at one standard deviation, you have April 9th, 1979 and December 14th, 1979. 68% of the days are within that span. There's your median and there's your standard deviation. So you're literally looking for that, that top of the bell curve, the real meaty part of it. Uh, you're really looking uh, for most probable to be in there. Now that doesn't mean it can't be outside, but my first axiom is that is my discovery axiom. And that states that the higher the traffic in the vicinity, the higher the likelihood that the money gets discovered. So basically what this means is the more people that are around, the more probable it is that they're going to say, whoa, look at this, what did we find? We found money. Okay, there's people camping. I've been camping uh, there myself. Granted, the population has gone up since then. I, I understand that, but at the same time, you're still going to have boaters, you're still going to have campers, you're still going to have uh, uh, people picnicking, which is exactly how the money was discovered in the first place. And the location of this money was actually one of the more high-trafficked areas. Here we have a problem, though, because right in our meat, meaty part, because it's so trafficked, uh, that's exactly where we would think the, the most probable occurrence of the money arriving. But the problem is there's people around. May 28th is Memorial Day. I believe that these are warm weather months. These are months where there's holidays, such as July 4th, Memorial Day, Labor Day where people are camping more often. I have been camping, like I said before, I mean, within a mile of where that money was found, I was camping right there on the riverbed. 
uh, and people do it today. In fact, the last time I was through there, there was people camping, camping, and they were they had uh, marshmallows on a on a thing. I mean, it was yards away. So, the more traffic, the more probability someone's going to find that money. Unfortunately, the highest traffic is right in the meaty part of our bell curve. So we do have a problem. And so I'm going to adjust the curve. I'm going to basically take that out. Okay, so the next axiom is that uh, the, money is, the money is easiest to discover the very day it shows up. The very day it shows up, right on top of the stand. So anyone walking by can look down and say, oh, smacks, I just found a buttload of money. All right? But as time goes on, the wind comes up, or what have you, and the sand starts to slowly brush over the money. And so as time passes, it gets more and more difficult to find the money. Effectively, this means the longer the money sits, the harder it gets to find. I take those two axioms together with our little bell curve here, and I say, all right, that middle's pretty much very improbable that the money arrived in between Memorial Day and Labor Day. You have a high traffic situation, uh, and uh, which means it would have already been likely to have been found because there's people there, all right? And the day it shows up, it's really easy to find. So especially you have two components happening at the same time, very unlikely. But also, that means that this uh, left tail right here, that the left tail is actually less probable than the right tail. Why? Well, it shows up, and uh, now you have a high traffic period right here where it's easier to find, okay? Whereas after the high traffic period, you have less people, and so uh, while it's sitting on top, there's really not, not, not hardly anybody around. There's less people around to actually come across that money and find it, okay? So I'm saying on either side of those tails is probable, but definitely the right tail more probable than the left tail. September is still a very warm month and people in the Northwest value that time a lot. You still have a lot of boaters, a lot of fishing on the, and this was a fishing location where this money was found. So I'm thinking, let's take a look at the weather reports to try and figure out, maybe we can narrow this range even further. So here is a calendar and at the top uh, right hand corner, you'll see a 71 there, that is September 1st. That is Labor Day weekend. It was a little bit cool that weekend. Uh, and then in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the number 73. That was the high temperature on the last day of September at 78, 82, 84. That's all October. And what I, what I discovered is you have a precipitous drop in temperature in October. So you're really going from 70s and 80s in September to 60s, 50s, and, and even lower in October. Two weekends after Labor Day, it was 91 degrees that Friday. I mean, it was very hot. That's where I'm thinking, hey, somebody's thinking, let's go camping. You're just going to have more people in the area. And especially if you want to talk about a money bag with, a, with you know, this big, enormous bag landing on the beach. There's a lot of people there that could have uh, seen that, and it didn't happen. So my most probable date, I'm going to stick within that original standard deviation and say December 14th. But I'm thinking now, October to December is the most likely time that that money arrived. And uh, now that you have a better idea of when the money arrived, we're going to move on to the next question in the following videos of how did the money get there. And I don't just mean, did it get there by the river, or did someone plant it, or bury it, or whatever. No, no, we're really going to dig in and find what inferences, because this is really all about inferences. And from those inferences, you can solve many, many, many puzzles, logical mysteries, and yes, paradoxes. So, join me then, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.